This brings us to dicots. Uh, these are eudicots, uh, which eudicots are a monophyletic lineage, but there are a number of um, families of flowering plants that are considered to be basal or ancestral types of dicots, which are not included in here. But all of these are in uh, fall within a monophyletic clade called the eudicots, or I just describe them here as dicots, six families. The rosaceae is the rose family and includes uh, these ornamental roses, but native roses, which I'll show you in a second here, are very different. Uh, these ornamental roses have been selected to have many, many, many more petals than your uh, the native roses that we typically see. So some patterns that we see in the rose family uh, is typically they have five petals that are uh, radially symmetric. Uh, they may have five or ten stamens. Uh, and then they may have a little bit of uh, uh, an enlargement to the receptacle, or so it surrounds the gynecium, or the, the, the uh, ovaries, as you can see here. Uh, here's one of our native roses. This is the Carolina rose, and you can see it only has five petals, uh, but then it has several stamens. How many stamens? I don't know, but it's it's more than ten. More than ten. So it's a, usually typically a, a larger number. Apples and pears are in the rose family. If you've ever seen uh, an apple tree or a rose tree blooming, uh, sorry, a pear tree blooming, you will notice that it's got that same sort of rose flower shape with the five petals and multiple stamens. You can see vestiges of those stamens if you look at the, uh, the end away from where the stem is on the apple. If you look underneath, uh, you will find the, um, you often can find the stamens lurking inside there. Cherries, both flowering varieties and fruit bearing varieties are in the genus Prunus. Uh, here's an example of a flowering cherry, very famous for flowering in the springtime uh, before they produce leaves. So you get these beautiful displays of pink and white uh, blossoms. Look up more closely, you can see five petals, uh, ten or more stamens. Peaches are in the same genus. Uh, prunus, as are plums and nectarines and um, almonds, all in the genus Prunus, all have that similar type of five-petaled flower, uh, and all producing droops as their fruits. Strawberries are also in the rose family. Uh, you can see um, the stamens in this case are underneath that hull. The hull is the remains of the sepals. And if you look under there, sometimes you might find a stray petal, but you will often be able to see, if you look closely, the anthers that are still underneath there, the stamens. Now, in a strawberry, it is an aggregate of ex, uh, an aggregate fruit because there are lots and lots of carpels. Each one of these little yellow or dark red dots on here represents a single carpel. So these are the ovary walls on the mature fruit. Uh, and these, this, is, this fruit type is uh, an akene. Each one of these little spots contains a single seed inside of it. And uh, what is the, the red juicy part that we like to eat? That is actually the receptacle that holds all the floral parts together that enlarges. So that's what makes it an accessory fruit, is that it has um, tissue other than the ovary wall that makes up the thing we think of as the fruit. So this might look kind of familiar to you. Uh, this is a uh, blackberry before it 
has completely developed. And you can see underneath here, there are many of the stamens. The petals have already fallen off. But when we look inside, what we see, all of these are individual carpels that are going to fuse together to form the mature fruit. So blackberries like this and raspberries are in this genus Rubus. So this is another type of fruit where we have an aggregate of multiple carpels all fused together. And all of these little brown hairs in this image are derived from the stigmas and styles that uh, allowed for the pollination of each of these individual carpels when it was in flower. So this includes blackberries, raspberries, uh, loganberries, uh, marionberries, uh, all in this genus Rubus. And this uh, pocket in here, this gap is from where the receptacle was uh, when the plant was in flower. Moving on to the Brassicaceae. The Brassicaceae is the mustard family. Now, most dicot families have flowers that are, uh, have uh, petals and sepals that are in groups of five. The Brassicaceae has flowers that are arranged in groups of four. So one of the older names for the mustard family is the cruciferi, which means uh, the cross-bearing flowers, because they have these four petals that kind of make it look like a cross shape rather than a star shape. So here are a couple of examples of um, mustard flowers. The fruits are variable, but typically they're some type of a capsule uh, called a silique or a silicle. They can be kind of long and skinny, or they can be heart-shaped or more round. But a number of important food crops come to us uh, from the Brassicaceae, including broccoli. You might wonder, what is broccoli? What part of the plant is that? Uh, well, it's the stem and then the immature florets. So each of these little spots in here is um, would develop into a flower if you let the broccoli continue to grow, but we typically harvest it before those uh, florets can mature into flowers. So broccoli is uh, a form of Brassica oleracea. Uh, so is cabbage believe it or not. These are different horticultural varieties of the same species, Brassica oleracea, and there are a number of other vegetables that are also uh, have been selected by humans to uh, be vegetables for us, including Brussels sprouts and kohlrabi and kale, and it all has to do with what part of the plant we have selected. In the case of cabbage, we've selected for leafy growth and for a lack of elongation of the stem. So if we let our cabbage uh, continue to grow and not harvest it when it's still in this head form, uh, inside all of these different leaves, we would find that there is a stem that could elongate and grow into a flowering and subsequently fruiting stalk. Now, how many times have you been in the grocery store, in the baking aisle, and looked and seen canola oil and wondered, what is a canola? Is it something like a cannoli, like they make those Italian pastries out of? And the answer is no. Uh, canola is actually a plant in the mustard family, also in the genus Brassica, uh, that produces seeds that yield... Uh, a nutritious oil. Uh, nutritious because it contains polyunsaturated fatty acids, which are uh, considered to be better for you as a source of uh, fat in the diet than saturated fats or trans fats. But you can see it's got that very typical mustard flower with the four petals. Uh, and yellow is very common in the mustard family for a flower color, as is white, sometimes pinkish, purplish. 
Uh, speaking of purplish, radishes are also in the mustard family, as is horseradish and the Japanese uh, horseradish called wasabi that is frequently eaten with sushi. Uh, wasabi, uh, real wasabi, is made from the root of the wasabi plant, which is ground up very finely. Uh, and wasabi and radishes and uh, mustard, mustard seed that is used to make the condiment mustard, uh, as well as broccoli and cabbage. All of these plants that are found in the mustard family uh, contain sub uh, secondary compounds called isothiocyanates, which is what gives them that sort of... Um, pungent flavor or aroma and it's supposed to be the thing that is in cruciferous vegetables that gives it um, gives them uh, properties that are supposed to help protect against certain types of cancers by scavenging for free radicals <laughs>